Hey guys, happy Sunday to you. It is Sunday, right? I'm getting my days mixed up, okay, with this COVID-19 quarantine. Hope all is well. Hope you're having a great weekend. Look, this is on y'all. Y'all asked for a part two on sexless marriage. So right now, I'm just going to tell you, grab your, your drink, your tea, pad, pad and um, a pen, because we're going to get right into it. I have an amazing, amazing guest today. Um, her name is Keisha Tyson, and she's a businesswoman, an author, a minister, professional counselor, wife, and mother. And I'm going to tell you something. She is not afraid to tackle this topic. And it's a topic that is so important to, to us all. And it has, it's taboo. It's been taboo. And we just have to take the limits off of that, take the um, stigma off of sex and the different issues and deal with them accordingly so that we all can have healthy sex lives within our marriage. It doesn't make sense for us to be walking around clogged up and angry and nauseated because some people get nauseated when they don't have sex. I won't tell you who, but anyway, um, <laughs> but I want you to tell someone, I want you to like this um, episode, share. I want you to download um, my podcast, any of the um, platforms that you're comfortable with. If you have questions, please do not hesitate to um, share them, ask them. We will answer them, not afraid. And without further ado, I want to bring in my friend, one of my favorite people on this planet Earth, Keisha Tyson. Hello. Hello, hello. Welcome to Insights with Latrice. How are you? I'm good. Not clogged up and angry like you just started off saying. You just jumped right in there, didn't you? <laughs> I did. And it's not that it was me that I was talking about or anything of that nature. I get it. Right? I'm talking about them other people. I get right? it. I get it. <laughs> I get it. But well, I know you. <laughs> exactly. Well, I just appreciate you being on here and willing to talk about this topic, the subject matter, because I know it's taboo and I know it's hard to um, talk about it, especially because, you know, people are very um, sensitive about this topic. But if we don't get free in this area, there's a lot of marriages that are being destroyed because of this situation, this sexless marriage thing. Um, but I introduced you with all of those titles is there anything else we need to know about you um no it i mean i'm just keisha all of those things are just extras i'm just keisha i'm just a woman i'm a child of god first i'm just keisha yeah. so all of those things are just qualifications but you wanted me i'm here in the flesh let's get to it Absolutely. You, you don't care about all those all those titles you just gave me. You just want to know what I have to say. So that's I do. <laughs> I want to get into it real okay. good. So okay. the one thing as I was studying this topic out, so we know that, um, let me get my notes, 50% of marriages end up in divorce, unfortunately, right? And obviously with COVID-19, we're seeing that more and more, you know? Um, and then what I found interesting 15 to 20 percent are in sexless marriage so i was like okay so what do they define as sexless and i went to different um sources and one definition said sexless marriage is no activity for a year i was like okay then another uh -huh. one for a year then okay. another one said fewer than 10 sexual encounters within a year that still is pretty thirsty and so so <laughs> i'm a little concerned because if i don't you know 10 in a week and a half is a little less <laughs> so my question 
is that accurate? Because I know that you have clients, um, you know, that you're dealing with. So I guess I have a two part for you. Is okay. that accurate to define that's what a sexless marriage is? So, okay, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, so yes. So um, 10 to 12 acts of sex within a 12 month period is considered a sexless marriage. So what's everybody doing? All them other days of the year. Well, I don't know what they're doing. That's <laughs> why we're talking now. But yes, it's defined. Okay. It's defined of 12 to 10 or 10 to 12, however you want to, however okay. you want to table it. Um, acts of performance, physical performance okay. um, within the year. Anything less than 12, you have a sexless marriage. So if you only have sex one time a month, for 12 months, it's considered a sexless marriage. What's your other question? <laughs> okay, sorry. I had to get myself together. Okay, and then in what you do, you and your husband, Buster, first of all, let me just pause. You know, I do side journeys. If any of you guys follow Keisha after tonight, when you see photos of her and her husband, Buster, it looks like they just had sex. Every photo. Anyway, anyway, going back. But um, so with your clientele, with the different challenges and issues, because when they come to you, unfortunately, they're in a really turmoil situation. Correct. Is sex one of the leading causes of, of, of problems in marriage and when they get to you and uh, Buster? Well, I want to just touch something before it gets to the sexless part. Okay. Something has to happen before it gets to that point. Okay. So, yes, by the time someone reaches Buster and I, they are not having sex. That's fact. Okay. But that is not the reason why they called Buster and I. So it's typically something that happened that stemmed the lack of sex, like a health issue, a communication issue, a non-attracted issue, a lack of finances issue. So it, it stems from something else. You just don't say I do and just say I don't in the bedroom. It stems from somewhere. So I just wanted to point that out because yes, by the time they reach to us and they need help to try to figure out the communication problem, we, we have couples that work on a communication problem and are focused on rebuilding their marriage. And sex still doesn't come till months down the line because they're not ready to open that door of intimacy again. So you have to work on those things first because sex, believe it or not, what regardless of what anybody say, it's a mind thing. And if your mind isn't focused on the person that you are married to or spiritually connected to, then you're not going to want to give them your body in, in no way, shape or form. You're not going to want to perform in that way. So that's interesting. You started giving me reasons why people have issues before it, it becomes a, even a sex issue. And I had written some down. Some of the things you said, your body changes, finances, uh, past trauma, hormonal changes, lack of interest, not exciting. We're going to talk about that. <laughs> okay. We're going to get into that affairs, right? And any mental health issues. Right. So you said that it starts here. Right. Explain that. Well, I remember when uh, Buster and I were having problems, maybe about, uh, I want to say about 10 years ago okay. and right around that time um these bedroom parties were really really prevalent um it, I, I can't even remember some of the name of them but i know candy burris she has something yes. called bedroom candy yes. and or candy coated nights but they were having these pleasure parties where people will come to your home and bring out all of these things that will make your bedroom exciting type of thing. And I remember having a party and all of my girlfriends came over and you could purchase things. And it wasn't taboo stuff, but it was it was things that would make things exciting in okay. your bedroom, right? And I remember 
too afraid to, to to purchase anything at my own party. I just wanted to see the women laugh and have a good time. But I remember saying, well, it's my party and I have to purchase something. So I purchased these deck of cards. Okay. And they were called PITs. You, you had those cards? They weren't that name, but okay. Well, I don't know if these are the same cards you had. So okay. let me just tell you what these, these were called PITs, right? Okay. And it was called Pleasure Interrupting Thought Cards. Mm. And I thought it was very interesting, even now just thinking about the topic, because back then it talked about whenever you got to the point where you wanted to be intimate with your mate, but you were thinking about all of the things that kind of tried to interrupt those thoughts those intimate thoughts, like the bills that were due or how he made you mad the, the week before or just yeah. all of the stuff that you all have just plaguing your marriage in your mind, yeah. pull out one of these cards. And so I would remember that, okay, I think tonight is gonna be the night he's gonna wanna do something. Let me just try, look at these cards real quick. And it will be cards to try to remind you of why you were connected to your wow. spouse in the first place. It will be pictures of images of things that you can do, but it was also it, for people that wanted to read, it was something on one side. And okay. people that needed a picture, it was something on another side. And so to go back to your question about mental, I think it is mental because a lot of times you can't connect with what's in front of you because it's too much white noise in your head. Mm -hmm. And so trying to get those things out, trying to not focus on, even as ministers, you bring in other people's problems into your home. Mm -hmm. You know, we counsel couples at night and sometimes we're on Zoom calls with them up until 9, 9.30 at night. And so to finish downloading and, and ministering to a couple and then go upstairs to your own bedroom, you can't tell me that it's easy to cut that stuff off. Okay. And sometimes we find ourselves at 10 o'clock at night talking about another person's marriage. So a lot of the, and that's just our story, but a lot of things are constantly going through your mind about whether you feel fat, whether he thinks you're fat, you know, whatever's going through his mind. You know, because it's not, I, I, I listened to last week's call, and it's not always the, the husband that, that that wants it and the women don't. Sometimes it's the woman that wants it and the husband don't. Well, yeah. if he lost his job, or if he knows that, you know, COVID is around and he's not bringing in as much money as he normally would be, or the kids' yeah. tuition is doing, you know, it's, it's things yeah. going on in men's minds too. So, what about the men that feel overweight. If, if, if my husband is not overweight by far, right. but my husband feels like he's overweight. So if he was to let that thought cloud his mind, yeah, it could affect our sex life. So I, I just think it's mental first. It's it's a lot of things that's going on in there where you yeah. just got to sometimes just relax and just let it go and just deal with in the moment. As, as counselors, and I know you know this term, mindfulness, you have to focus on the moment. You have to focus on the moment. And you know what, I completely agree with that, Keisha. And I think that we have to understand ourselves first and understand where we need to go. Right. But we have to be honest with ourselves. And I think sometimes that's the hardest part in it. I know even just trauma, you know, we sometimes, and I said this last week, we like to sweep it under the rug, but it's still in the house. I think we have to deal with the fact, um, because I, you know, last week's episode, my inbox was full, okay? And I was answering um, until midnight. And one of the things um, that people were sharing with me, men and women, were the fact that um, trauma issues that, you know, childhood trauma, um, you know, molestation, you know, different things like that. And so at that point, you know, you need to go see some type of counselor, therapist or what have you. But first, I think the biggest thing you have to come clean with that. Do you think, or what is your take 
when someone says sex is gross? I think that that has to go back to the trauma. It has yeah. to go back to the trauma because sex is a beautiful thing. It is, Why is it a beautiful thing. Oh my gosh. Um, to be physically, emotionally, and spiritually connected to another person, to give that person your all, to have that soul tie with that person, to be able to share everything inside of me with another person is what God intended for me to do with my husband. So how can I think that that's a gross thing? We create life together. We make music together. How can me bring in my children in the world? I think that's a gross thing. Anybody that thinks sex is a gross thing to me has to have a gross act tied to it. Mm. That's good. It's like, it's, it's like money. For people to say money is the root to all evil, you have to look at the relationship with money. So you would have to look at the relationship that someone has with sex, the past. Also, what if it's not a traumatic thing, but what if it's a unidentified thing? Explain so when, I, when I was preparing for this, um, this, this is literally going to blow your mind what I'm about to say to you. But we are very open with our children. And my, our children know what, what we do. And, you know, and I said, hey, I'm going live tonight. But I want to let you all know, just in case you all see it, it's about sex. And so I wanted to see how they felt what they thought about it, what were some of the things that they were going to say. And I am talking to my middle and, and my younger baby. So okay. a 15 year old and 11 year old. Yeah. And so we're having dinner, me, Buster and the two children, and they are just firing off the 11 and the 15 year old, the reasons why they think people have sexless marriages. Mm. And one of the things came up was sexual orientation. What if someone has not identified with accepting that they may like the same sex and are already in a marriage? I wasn't ready. I wasn't even. <laughs> <laughs> that is so good. But it's factual. That's yeah. the world that we're living in now. People marry for so many different reasons. Yeah. The reasons why we say I do now are different from the reasons that people said I do when, you know, our parents and our grandparents were coming up. Yeah. People are marrying now because of money. People are marrying now because of obligation. Yeah. People are marrying now because the person that they really wanted to marry, they can't marry them because they're with somebody else right now. So they're taking you just to have somebody. People are marrying because they're older and they didn't think that they were going to get married. So now they are in love with um, the idea of marriage, but not necessarily in love with the person that they're married to. So if I married the wrong person and just looked over him in the middle of the night and he wanted to have sex with me and I'm like, you know what? I'm just really here to get retirement benefits. I wouldn't want to have sex with him either. Wow. Very true. Very true. And um, before we continue, let me just say this to everyone watching. Hello. Thank you for joining in. Make sure you're liking this. And if you are listening um, after this podcast or um, Facebook Live, please put hashtag replay. And if you have questions, please let me know. Put it down so Keisha can answer them. <laughs> so put them <laughs> down right now. And nothing is out of bounds. You know, we will answer it. We'll make sure of it. So, Keisha, let's get back to this. So, in a sexless marriage, so it starts before the step, the sex stops. It's bills. It's an affair. It's medical. It's whatever. So, how do we get back to a place called there? Because that was one of the things that I saw in people messaging me last Sunday, how do I get back to that place? Whether it was the individual. Now, again, it's not just men saying, hey, my wife's not having sex. It's women saying, by golly, I want sex and he won't give it to me. So what are some, some tools that we can utilize 
um, to get us back to a place where it's sexually active. Because I'm going to be honest, when I was studying how they define sexless marriage, I'm thinking, so when they say 10 or more within 12 months is active, to me, that blew my mind. Because <laughs> because here's the deal. I'm thinking that you at least, so there's seven days out of the week and we work, but we do come home unless someone works overnight. So I'm thinking, okay, four to five, six and a half times a week would be healthy. But that's healthy for you. So okay. it's relative. It's relative because okay. some people are happy with every other day. Some people are happy with once a week. Some people are happy with twice a week. And the reality is what is happy with? Because happy and settling are two different things. Okay. I could be happy with sex four days a week. Okay. Right? But Buster could want sex seven days a week. So there's a conflict. It, it's a conflict, but if no one ever discussed the conflict, that's where the problem lies. That's where the problem lies. So you said, how do you get back? My answer with how do you get back is the number one reason why I think couples come to us all the time is communication. That's the only way you can go back. And so the first thing that you need to discuss when you go back is to define what is sex. A lot of times when couples come to me, the first thing we ask them to define is what is cheating. Because what I think cheating is and what you think cheating is, it may it, it may be completely different. You have some men that think the physical act of having intercourse with another woman is cheating. Yeah. You have some women that think that actually communicating with somebody on Facebook that I don't know that's not our couple friend. It's cheating. So okay. the first thing you need to do is define cheating. So in this case, since we're talking about sex, then the first thing that you need to define is what is sex? Wow. What is sex? Wow. <laughs> what is it? Now, are we talking about penetration? I mean, okay. I, I, I'm sure I can't see who watching. I'm looking me <laughs> at two divided by two. You know this. This isn't. This isn't for the um the weak at heart. They say so. If you're looking for a scripture, I'm not about to give it to you. Right. I'm coming. I'm coming to you from a a a, a almost licensed therapist point and, and someone that that counsels couples. And I'm a wife, right? So what is sex? Are we talking about penetration? Are we talking about hand holding? Are we talking about intimacy? Are we talking about um, physical? Are we talking about oral? Uh, what are we talking about? What makes you feel sexually fulfilled? And so you have to discuss those things. And those are topics that you do not want to touch when you get married. Unfortunately, they're not even really topics that you want to touch prior to getting married. I want to know, okay, if I get ill, what's going to happen? If I get sick, what's going to happen? How are you going to be satisfied? What are we going to do in the six weeks after I had the baby and you still need attention and the doctor told me to wait six weeks? What are we going to do? It's time to have adult conversations. And there's so many kids that are married doing adult things, they don't want to have adult conversations. Marriage isn't a game. And if you, and I'm just, and yeah, I'm talking to, because to, we're talking about sexless marriages, right? Yes. Right. Okay, yes. I can say marriage, right. Okay, so it's not a game. It is not a game. So you have to have these hard conversations, just like we have to talk about, am I getting cremated or am I getting buried? Right. Well, who's going to get the money? Who's going to take care? Who's going to handle the final arrangements? Just like we have to have those talks in marriage, we have to talk about sex. I'm 42 next Sunday. Yeah. I, I like different things than I liked when I was 22. Yeah. And so it's unfair for me to assume that my husband knows those things. Talk I about it. Tell him 
what I like and what I don't like. Mm, that don't feel so good no more. Mm, I think I'm a little too old for that. Mm, that position hurt my back. Those are things that we have to discuss. And if we're not willing to discuss those things, then you're willing to have a sexless marriage. Well, tell me this, Keisha, because you know I'm petty. Um, <laughs> why, why we've been married 15 years, 30 years, why haven't we figured out the conversation piece is necessary? That's kind of hard to answer. Okay. Um, because if you're not talking about sex, there are other things you aren't talking about. I refuse to believe that you're talking about all of the things that you should be talking about in your marriage if you're not talking about sex. You're not going to talk about 19 things and there are 20 on the list and you just refuse to talk about that last one. So if you are hiding how you truly feel about your sex life, then there's some other things that's lying dormant that you haven't even scratched the surface. But when people start going through midlife crisis and when people start dying in your life and when people start getting COVID-19 and when you start getting fed up about being in a, in a job and you feel like God is supposed to have you be an entrepreneur, those are things that's going to start to weigh down on you. And then you're going to start to go to sleep with a headache. And you're going to start to go to sleep, turning your back on your mate. And you're going to start to do things or, or surf the internet or find yourself in places that your mate is not because you want to just forget about all of the things that are weighing you down and not deal with that. That's why people use drugs. That's why people drink because they don't want to deal with the problems that are lying dormant and they just want to forget about it. They just want something to ease their mind right now. So it's easier for me to slip in somebody else's inbox because they're not asking for the mortgage money. They're not asking for things that you need to take care of as my man. I can just go and have sex with you, buy you something to eat real quick, and then go home and deal with that. And so we have to figure out, okay, you got a man, you married a man. Okay, what do I need to do to continue to empower him and help him to continue to empower me? So we can empower each other in the sheets. And if those conversations are not being had, then you're going to have a sexless marriage. Wow. You're just going to have a sexless marriage. Okay. Wow. Uh, <laughs> oh, well. Well, y'all, anyone got any other questions for Keisha? Because uh, we can drop the mic at this point. Um that's so powerful. Everything that you've said, I know you guys are getting something out of this. Um, going back to steps to take, and you said the biggest thing was communication, right? And I'm sure you talk about that a lot when you counsel um, couples. The thing that I find interesting about communication is relative some, to some point. Because, you know, what a man thinks communication is versus what a woman thinks communication is typically is two different things. So you have to get to understand each other um, in that process. Right. You have to understand how to respond to each other. What does this mean when she says this? You know, I'm a very sarcastic person. So Olivier had to understand my sarcasm where he comes from um, a family and a culture where sarcasm is not even in anywhere. You know, you're just very direct. So my sarcasm was always passive aggressiveness. And okay. so I wanted you to manipulate your way and figure it out. And so I had to understand, no, I had to be honest and, and, and straightforward and, and deal and talk you know, directly. And so I think that's a lot of it because in one couple that um, was talking to me last week, um, the husband is not giving enough, but he stays focused on work. He stays focused on all these business ventures. So for the longest time, she felt unattractive. So she did a lot of things 
you know, and their communication was based on um, his few words, right? So what what would you say to them, that couple right there? She finally has figured out, okay, there must be something bigger than this, but his focus, and so he's always too tired to do anything. Okay, so you said, so I heard so many things. Okay. okay so the first thing that I want to classify is I do believe that communication is relative. However, I do not think it's relative per se, meaning male, female. I think it's relative per couple. Mm. And that's important to know okay. because I am married to a really, 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 really good communicator. Right. Okay. And so it is important for you to know your spouse, not male versus female. Okay. It's very important for you to know your spouse. So that's the first thing that I wanted to say. The second thing that I wanted to say is what you focus on is what you love. So if he's focused on his job and if he's focused on his business ventures, that's who he's married to. So he's making love to what he's married to. People make love to something that's giving them something in return. When we have sex, we don't just have it just to have it because we just want to lay in have it. We had it to make us feel good. We had it to make us connected to the person that we're married to. That's why we have it, right? To let them know how we feel about them and vice versa. It's to get some gratification. If he's not getting gratification with his physical wife, then he has to be getting some type of gratification from his work life. So you are focused on the wrong thing. So I should be made to feel just as important as your job. I should be made to feel just as important as your business ventures. Because what you deposit in those things is what's going to give you your return. So he goes to work, he gets a paycheck. He, he invests in a business, he gets something in return. But if he does not invest in his wife, he's not going to give anybody in, any return. He's not going to get any return on his investment. And after a while, when you don't sow into an investment, it dwindles away. So even though physically or, or, or legally, they may still be married, but there is going to be a lifeless situation not just a sexless situation it's going to be a lifeless situation so i would tell both of them to they're going to have to get some help because it's become culture now mm. it's not just a habit it's culture wow. that's the normal in their household now wow. and for, for anybody to think that he's going to be able to say okay well Latrice had a good point last year, last week, and Minister Keisha had a good point this week. That I'm going to work less this week. That's only temporary. It's only temporary. It's like Christmas. Everybody know it comes once a year. Everybody know come Thanksgiving, they already selling Christmas stuff. Come October, they already, it's a seasonal yeah. thing. So he's only going to be able to turn it off for a little while. Wow. That's good. Well, I did say, I did tell her, listen, <laughs> you need to get with my people on the East Coast. <laughs> they counsel. <laughs> so you might be getting that call. Let me just read some of the comments um, okay. to you. I don't know if you can see it. So Samantha said 10 times a year. That goes back to, I think, what we were defining as sexless. Jordan or Judy Gordon said, most certainly. Salita said, wow. Yolanda said, preach, preacher. <laughs> Um, Jalen Gordon says, wow, people love, people make, I'm sorry, people make love to what they're married to. That was a word in itself, a tweet. It was a text, a post and everything. Salita said, that's deep. Olivier has the fire emojis. Yolanda said, you are truly speaking facts. You are. You absolutely are. Um, I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. Uh, I don't see any questions. Do I see questions? No. All right, let's let's continue. We don't have a whole lot of time, but enough time. Um, you just made me like. I'm just like, okay. So now, what? Do, what question do I give you now? <laughs> Where do we go from from here? Let's talk about this creativity in sex. 
Okay. Sometimes that's an issue um, mm -hmm. or the lack of creativity. Can you speak on that? Well, creativity, it, I, I think that, no, I feel like I'm tongue tied, but I think that no matter what we break it down to, it's still going to be a byproduct of communication. So, so but, communication because, is just the foundation. It has to be. Yeah. It has to yeah. be. Because it, if we get to a point where we stop communicating, yeah. if we get to a point where we stop communicating, then everything else, it's like oil in a car. Your engine will blow, like straight up and down. So creativity, what I would say about creativity and sex is as long as both of you are comfortable. Okay. You both have to be comfortable. Okay. You both have to be able and willing to try it. Even if it's one. Now, I'm not talking about bringing up. I feel like sometimes when I'm dealing with people, especially online, I have to preface it with, I'm not telling you to be okay with adding a third party to your bedroom. Okay. I have to say that because there are some people that do it. So that, that I believe <laughs> that it should just be the husband and the wife. Yeah. I just want to say that. Um, but as long as you're comfortable, both of you guys are comfortable with making those decisions. As long as both of you are willing to please the other person, as long as both of you are willing, I think that a lot of times we are so focused on ourselves and what's going to make us feel good. Mm -hmm. What's going to get us off? Okay. What is pleasing to us? What is yeah. sexy to us? We're worried about us even when we even as women sometimes when we go buy a dress it's what we look sexy with. Mm -hmm. you know my anniversary Buster and i'll be married 16 years on it's wednesday mm -hmm. and um i've been looking for something to look good in for him okay and so a lot of times we're not focused on the spouse. But if you are 100% focused on your husband and your husband is 100% focused on you in the bedroom, just overall, but especially in the bedroom, you couldn't go wrong. Yeah. Babe, let's try this. Babe, I noticed the last time I did this, your face didn't look so good. <laughs> I mean, let's talk about it. <laughs> right? Uh, oh, did that, did no, that, no. Did that, did that yeah. make feel comfortable to you? Absolutely. You know, turn the lights on. Yeah. How about, because when we were growing up and we we romanticized about movies and what we saw on yeah. TV, everybody always had the light off. Put yeah. the light on. Look yeah. at what's going on. Look yeah. at the fact that she's holding her stomach in because she don't want you to see her jiggling. Look wow. at the fact that he isn't getting as a wreck as he normally will. Okay, babe, let's talk about that. Babe, let's go to the doctors. Babe, what can we do? Because we just 45 or we just 48 or we just 60 something. I want us to do this as long as we possibly can. And if you can't do it, if it gets to the point where you can't do it, if it gets to the point where this no longer feels good, if this gets to the point where naturally your body can't produce the way it used to, then what are we going to do? And because those, I only want you. Right there. Because I only want you. Right I don't there. want anybody else. I only want you. So don't tell me I can go be with somebody else. Don't tell me I can go yeah. please myself. I want to be with you. Absolutely. We have a couple of questions, Keisha. Okay. Uh, Yolanda says, so should sex be a priority in a marriage? Sex should be a priority in a marriage if it's a priority to your partner. Explain that a little more. Okay. Um, if, okay. It's not like the mortgage. Okay. <laughs> mortgage has to be a priority because you have to have some way to live. Right? Okay. But orange juice may not be a priority. Uh -huh. If your husband likes orange juice and you like cranberry juice and you're not willing to go buy both. Okay. <laughs> if you got to take turns, if you can afford to only get one, do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. You all have to come to the table and say, okay, babe, what is a priority? But it goes back to defining what is sex. Yeah. Okay. 
it, go, it, it, it now goes back to a conversation. Conversation, because sex isn't always the penetration. That is correct. That is correct. And that's what I think also is important to explore sex more than just the penetration. That is correct. Is so many other layers. But if you tap into it and communicate, and as Olivia and I have grown, you know, it'll be 18 years in November, we've learned and we're still learning. Listen, um, sex is not just that, you know, he was sexing me the other day with taking me on a date. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so um, I think we have to get back to understanding and defining what is sex. Let me just do this. Kelly says, talk about the difference between emotional intimacy and physical intimacy. Okay. So emotional intimacy is the two of you connecting so you can see into each other. That's the definition of intimacy. And to me, you see, right? So I should be able to be vulnerable with my spouse. I should be able to give him everything, give him all parts of me without holding anything back, without feeling judged, being able to communicate with him on an emotional level, being able to think some of the same thoughts. Sometimes Buster finished my sentences or he's praying about something that I just got finished praying about, that spiritual connection, right? And so having that connection with your spouse Sometimes it's even better than sex. Have you ever seen a um a movie? And the image is in my mind, but the 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 name of the movie has left me. But have you have you seen a movie where the hug where where the guy just goes and kisses the girl? Was it was it five part feet? It was something, and he went and he blew on her or blew a kiss at her. I she, think it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. She was convulsing, right? Yes, yes. It just fell out. It's sometimes when it, my husband just comes and kisses me on the back of my neck and yeah. I can just fall out right then yeah. and there. Yeah. That connection yeah. is better to me than a physical one. Yeah. Because if you have the emotional connection, the physical connection will come easy. But a lot of people think that it's always about the act. It's always about the penetration and the hitting. And it's not. That's it's good. really not. Because if it was just about the physical connection, then I'm telling you, by the time you reach 60 or 70 and Papa has a, 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 a situation where he can't perform or, or mama hasn't having um vaginal dryness these are adult conversations yeah. that need to be had yeah. you are not gonna have them with your spouse but you're gonna have them with your doctor and that's wrong because anything yeah. that you say outside of your house need to be said inside of your house first so the first time that you get to the point where your body isn't talking to you the way that it should or it's not smelling the way that it should you should be like babe stop me right i need to go get checked out Yes, yes, yes. I need to go get checked out. Absolutely. And then go to the doctor and say, you know, I noticed lately that this isn't happening. Because that's what we do when we're going through menopause. Mm -hmm. I, like you, am going through this thing. And and my mom went through menopause early. She went through it at like 45. Yeah. So they, yeah. they started telling me that I'm going to start going through para, para, whatever you call it. Yeah. Menopause. Menopause. Yeah. Then, you know, my, my cycle is going to come in and out. And I'm going to have hot flashes. Then I'm going to be cold. And just and it has been real. Yeah. But before I started feeling that, I knew something was wrong. But I'm going to tell you something before I even knew something was physically wrong with my body and said it to my husband. My husband said it to me. Yep. He said it to me. Yeah. Just like every time I was pregnant, my husband told me I was pregnant. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. And so that goes beyond a physical connection. Yeah. That's That's an emotional one. That's a mental one. That's a spiritual one. Yeah. And it wasn't that he was sitting there counting my menstrual days and my menstrual cycles. It's because he knew his spouse. And so back to whoever asked was 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 sex a priority. 
You have to know your spouse. And if you don't know your spouse, then you don't know your house. Mm. 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 You have to know your spouse. I'm not going to say that. I keep talking. I'm not going to say a word. I don't know what else to say. Keep going. Keep going. Nope. You, you, have to, you, have to, you have to communicate. I cannot, I cannot say that enough. You have to communicate with every area of your life. You have to communicate. You have to communicate. Even after after uh, uh we watch movies, I, I used to watch a lot of them. And after after the sex scene, you know, somebody would be asleep, or somebody would be smoking a cigarette, or somebody was like, "How was that?" And the, and the girl might be sitting there looking like, "I could have had a V eight. Like seriously, you have to communicate. Okay, that wasn't good. Okay, let's talk about it. Why? Don't feel embarrassed, especially if it's not your spouse. I mean, especially if it is your spouse. It yes. Is, it should be your spouse. Yes. But, I got you. But you know what I meant. Yeah. You have to communicate about it. Your body changes when you get older. Your body changes when you have children. Your wants change. Your needs change. Your diet change. Your breast sag. Listen. Let's talk about it. I Come mean, on. that's what happens. Okay, so... If you thought that I was going to be up here and now I'm down here, let's, okay, is this not good for you? Okay, what can we do about it? Yeah. What can we do about it? And it's not about putting a woman down and not making her feel like she's enough. I'm not talking about that. It's not about putting a man down. Okay, you feeling overweight? Let's work out together. Yeah. Let's work out together. Baby, I love you just the way you are. But if you feeling bad, then I'm feeling bad. Because you are my number one focus. You are my number one focus. So what can we do together? Do we need to go to the doctors together? What do we need to do together? I read something, and it was a few years ago, about a woman trying to remove her stretch marks after having a baby. Mm. And then I read something that a man said, a real a woman isn't a real woman until he sees stretch marks. Mm. So it, it, you have to define what sex is. You have to define what sexy is. You have to define what if sex is a priority. And in order for you to define anything, you have to open up your mouth and communicate. Yes. And you have to learn how to communicate. And you have to learn how to communicate. According to your spouse. According to your spouse. Yeah. You know, that's interesting. You were saying the article you were reading about stretch marks. Um, What I'm also finding is men are also very sensitive as they get older about the way they look. And they are doing things, you know, they have the girdles now for men, you know, they're getting the um, different surgeries. And so I think that you really have to hone in onto your spouse and and not try and generalize. Uh, It's a man thing or a woman thing, but that it's individual according to um, the couples. Okay, guys. Oh, I have Veronica saying um, she's ear hustling as a single. Well, I think that was a very wise thing to do because you're getting all this information And one of the things that has been repeated over and over, you know, is communication, you know, and it starts now, you know, and sexless marriage didn't start with not having sex. It was lack of communication, lack of understanding each other and knowing each other. Um, We are going to uh, wrap up. I don't want to because I just could sit here and just say, listen, go ahead, go ahead, keep going, keep going. But um, um, I, you know what, first I'll say this, people, everyone listening, watching, if you think we need to do a part three, oh let, me, let, let us know, <laughs> put it in the comments. We'll have um, Keisha back. Um, we'll put it in that comment, part three, part three, part three. Um, and we definitely will have um, Keisha back. Uh, 
the fall, we have a guest next week, but the following week, if Keisha would come back. Um, but I got to see these part threes because I think that there's some more things that we need to talk about and discuss um, and even deeper. Right. And um, I'm going to let you have it. I'm, I'm going to let you have it. But before we go, um, I do an insight. And today I really want the insight. I want you to pray for the couples. Um, I think that's how we need to um, close this. But I want to talk about Keisha. Um, I said she was an author. Listen, let me tell you about this devotional that I have of hers. It's everything. Okay. <laughs> Listen, it is everything. When being a wife gets too hard, the one thing I love about Keisha, and I think the connection is because she's very honest and transparent. I'm very honest and transparent. I think the first day we talked um, by Zoom, I think we told every told each other everything. Like we didn't hold back. It's just that type of relationship. But um, let me just tell you about this devotional and prayer guide. Uh, and this is real talk. Sometimes being a wife, it's a beautiful, amazing, wonderful things, but sometimes um, it gets hard. Sometimes, you know, because life changes, you change and you're in a different season and you kind of can't figure you out and you can't figure your spouse out. This, this devotional was so right on time for me because, first of all, I didn't want to wait. Because I like to do things in order. And so there's each day you have um, a read. I want to read it all in just one, <laughs> one city. But it is an amazing read. I'm going to tell you right now. It will bless your whole life. But I'm going to tell you, if you love, if you have a best friend and she's married, if you love her, I think you should buy one for her, too. It is absolutely amazing. It's an easy read. Um if you look in my comments, it says where to go to get it um, on Amazon. Um, Keisha, you can tell she wrote it from her heart and her soul. And it is a blessing um, to women and to wives. And even if you're not a, um, married, but you know you're a wife, go ahead and get it. Go ahead and have that. That is one of the books that I have with me, especially when I'm doing my devotion and all that good stuff. So please get that. And then her and her husband, Buster, like I said, they are everything. Um, they literally on their pictures look like they just had sex every time. They are just <laughs> hot. They are beautiful. And um, uh oh, I don't know what happened. And they're beautiful. But they have their own ministry called Two Divided by Two. And you can go to their website um, and get all the information you need. Um, they counsel. And so you can get all the information. If this was good and you know I need to talk to this couple, um, definitely reach out to them. And um, it's, it's worth the investment. You know, you have to invest in yourself. You have to invest in your marriage, your relationship. And I promise you, I promise you, your life will be changed. They are a blessing. They are anointed to do this. And so um, Judy said, you need this book, even if you think you don't. I believe so. I agree, Judy. Yolanda, you got some fans. Yolanda says, I have to go. I have a webinar to attend. Great conversation. Great advice. Oh, she's sweet. Um, Salita said, thank you for praying for our marriage. Yes. So let's get into it, Keisha. I'm going to have you. This is our insight. You go ahead and pray, baby. Father God, we just thank you for this evening. We thank you for this powerful woman of God. Just 
for her to even share her platform with me tonight, for her even to open up her heart, Father, to these marriages, these sexless marriages, Father. But I'm going to pray specifically, Father God, tonight for these women and men of God, Father God, these men and women, your children, Father, that are in need of physical contact, physical connection with their spouses, Father God, but most importantly, Father, communication, Father. So I breathe life on their marriages, Father God. I breathe life into their bedrooms, Father God. I breathe life into their sex lives, Father God. I breathe life into their circumstances. Father God, I ask that you bless each and every man that's listening to this podcast. Father God, I ask that you bless each and every man that's going to hit Latrice's inbox today, Father God. I ask that you anoint him from the top of his head to the soles of his feet, that when he looks at his wife, that he wants no other but her. Father God, that something leaps up in his loins, Father God, that he's going to want to be attracted to her from days on end. Father God, that there will not be no sexless marriages, Father God, in her fan base in the name of Jesus. Father God, I decree and declare that if he's feeling any anything in his health, Father God, anything in his heart, anything with diabetes, Father God, anything with erectile dysfunction, Father, that he's going to communicate that to his wife, Father God, and then they're going to go to the doctor's, Father. I decree and declare that if they can't afford a doctor, Father, that you're going to make a way, that you're going to open up a door, that you're going to open up a door that no man can close, Father God, that you're going to make Medicaid available, that you're going to make Medicare available, Father God, that you're going to make open clinics available, Father, for you to help this man, Father God, that you're going to remove pride, Father God, and you're going to release your anointing that only you can release, Father God, and that any other woman that may try to put her perfume or her oil on, Father God, to distract this man of God, I bind it right now in the name of Jesus, Father God, and you said that what is bound on earth is bound in heaven, and what is loose on earth is loose in heaven, Father God, so I decree and declare that he's going to want his wife, I decree and declare that he's going to flirt with his wife, I decree and declare that he's going to make love to his wife, Father God. In the name of Jesus, he's going to hold her hand. He's going to look in her face. He's going to whisper in her ear, Father God. I decree and declare that they're not going to be able to wait sometimes for their bedroom. They're going to go in their car. They're going to go in their laundry room. They're going to go in their kitchen, Father God, when the kids are upstairs. I decree and declare that they're going to be everything that you've called them to be and not be sexless. Now I ask that you bless the woman of God, Father that she will communicate with her lips and with her heart, that she will close down her mind when the time comes for her to please her husband, that the bills won't interfere, that with the drama that she's having with her girlfriends won't interfere, the things that she's lacking, Father God, that they won't interfere, the house chores won't interfere, Father, and I decree and declare right now that the woman that thinks that sex with her husband is a chore, Father God, I bind that spirit up right now in the name of Jesus. I bind the spirit of no up right now. I bind the spirit of I got a headache right now. I bind the spirit of I just don't feel like it right now, Father God, because you're going to make a way. The marriage bed is not the file, Father God, so you're going to make a way to release your anointing in that place to release your anointing in her heart, to release your anointing in her body, Father God. Say, Father, if there's anything going on for her health, any diabetes, any high blood pressure, any vaginal dryness, Father God, any um, 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 anything that's going on with her stomach, any pelvic pains, any ovaries, any cysts, Father God, will be dissolved in the name of Jesus. Father God, I decree and declare that she will be blessed from the top of her head to the soles of her feet, Father God, that everything she touched will be blessed, that her husband will be blessed, that you will come through the power of her hands, Father God, and as she touches her husband, Father, that you will release an anointing on them that no man can separate, Father God, because you said with two or three are gathered, there you will be also. So when the last time I counted, a husband counted one and a wife counted two, Father, so there you should be. You should be in every way of their lives, Father God, in their finances. Finances, Father, in their bedroom, Father, with their children, Father, with them on their jobs, Father, with them in their cars, Father, be with that couple, Father, release your anointing like only you can do, like only you can do, that they will be blessed, that they will be happy, that they will have physical releases, emotional releases, Father God, that the truth will be released that they will be able to communicate on no level that they've ever communicated before. 
that they will be able to call on the name of Jesus when they don't know what to do themselves. Lord God, have your way. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Listen, you prayed heaven down, okay? Them angels are going through right now. Keisha, from the bottom of my heart, I thank you. I thank you for your ministry gift. I thank you for ministering to the people, um, allowing God to use you to change lives, to change marriages, to change situations. Thank you for your boldness. Thank you for the wisdom of God um, that you released as um, these people were listening. And, and for those of you who just got in, um, just re listen to replay and hashtag replay um, and share this because I'm telling you, this was life changing. Um, everything that was said and done was amazing, was awesome. And so I appreciate you. I thank you. And um, we're going to talk real soon. I love you. Thank you for being a part of Insights with Latrice. I think we have a part three. I think we have a part three. So we'll we'll talk about it. Okay. We'll talk about it, but I appreciate you. God bless you. God bless you. Love Thank to your you. family. Thank you. All right. All right, guys. It was another amazing, amazing time. The thing I love about Keisha, she's, as you can tell, very passionate, very knowledgeable, full of wisdom. Um, and she gave sound advice. Bobby says, what was part one? You can actually go to either in a podcast, my podcast on Insights with Latrice and listen to it if you want to go see it. You know, um, if you want to see a visual, you can actually um, go to my YouTube and see it, Insights with Latrice as well. I'm sorry, I had to, <laughs> I have producer telling me what to do. Um and you can see part one. This is part two. And we're going to do, it looks like we need to do a part three. And in that, I want you guys to put in comments part three and tell me or inbox me what are some of the topics that you want to talk about tonight. The topics and um, the things that we talked about was based on what feedback I got from part one. So um, this is a topic that we have to deal with. Um, it's like Keisha said, we can't ignore it. We can't feel embarrassed or it can't be a taboo topic. Marriages are being destroyed, but it comes back to communication, right? It is the communication, communication or the lack thereof before it ever gets to a sexless marriage. And there's things that have to be talked about. There's things that have to be understood and defined. And until that can happen, then you're going to have challenges in your marriage. And so we thank God for Keisha, her ministry, her family. Um, it, it's been good. And so I appreciate you all for watching Insights with Latrice, where I'm telling you real life. <laughs> this is real, some real life here about you. It's it's all about you, real you. And it was real good because the thing that made it good is that there were tools that were given for you to change your life and change the trajectory of your marriage. And that's a beautiful thing. And receive that prayer that Keisha prayed and go back and, and listen to this um this broadcast again, because I'm sure if you listen a couple of different times, you're going to hear something new, another revelation that will help you along this journey called life, called marriage. And so, Ashley, I love you too. Thank you, Bobby, for listening. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate you. I appreciate your support for Insights with Latrice. Have an amazing week. Have a lot of sex, but have a lot of communication too. Um, marriage, Mar <laughs> marriage. <laughs>
<laughs> marriage and just enjoy your week. Um, take it day by day. Know that you are born to be great and greatness is on the inside of you. Keep going. Don't quit. And I'll see you next week. Love you. God bless. Thanks for joining us this week on Insights with Latrice, where we talk about real life, real you, real good. Make sure to subscribe to the show in iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, or your favorite podcast platform so you'll never miss a show. While you're at it, if you find value in the show, we'd appreciate if you simply tell a friend about the show. For more information on how to be a guest or to book Latrice, visit us at www.latricekabuya.com. Be sure to tune in next Sunday as we stream live on Facebook for our next episode.